We actually invented the computer here in Manchester in 1948, but ever since then America has led the way, so we kind of had to go to America. We flew out to sunny California, and four of our reports are featured here. Kai Kraus and the Happy Software Company, making happy GUIs. Apple Computers, and I'm a PC man. Uh, we also went to my favorite, the Games Giant Electronic Arts, just south of San Francisco, and up in the hills above Seattle, yes, the Microsoft Campus. Our special thanks, by the way, to Virgin Airlines for waiving excessive excess baggage charges. Well, Kai's company, HSC, is based in Santa Barbara. That's in mid-California. The best of both worlds, the best of all worlds. I do enjoy the, the, the position I have now in being able to actually contribute to real change. People tease me about what's HSC mean. You know, HSC, the, the three letters mean the happy software company. A mutual acquaintance brought us together over dinner one night and said, this guy Kai Krauss is a brilliant software designer and, and graphics developer, and you really have a, a great sense of putting business together. Why don't you guys get together and build a new kind of company? I so happened to name it Kai's Power Tools, and it's probably kind of funny because when I said, we're going to name it Kai's Power Tools, he said, no, no, I don't want my name on that. And I, then we talked about it a little, and he realized that it made a lot of sense because Kai's whole persona reeks of a commitment to excellence in creating things. When I first did KPT, it was quite funny. All the interfaces are like 24 bits with shadows and round and curvature. And people mistook initially that it was all about little tiny turquoise spheres. You know, they would get responses like, oh, he's trying to make the Mac into a spaceship. And that isn't it at all. To me, the interface design is all about hiding complexity from the user. Worldwide, both retail and OEM, we shipped over 1.7 million units of Kai's Power Tools in just a little over two years. For every 100,000 copy we sold, we figure we have about 2,000 people that need to get these things done, and then 98,000 people that are sitting there just having fun with this stuff, you know? This is software that makes landscapes, right? And that's what brings me pleasure, is to bring that visceral excitement back to it for a hundred bucks. I, mean, I see pictures now, people bring me images where I go, my God, I had no idea. This isn't about brain surgery, okay? This is about creating something that's beautiful, that can have an aesthetic value or have a very practical uh, application, but why not make it fun? Why not put a little whimsy into it? To be at the crucible, to be where new technology is being envisioned, created, is in and of itself an exciting process. And then to see the light bulbs go on in people's eyes when they say, incredible product, it's changed the way I look at imaging, that's really satisfying. I regard everything that's out there now from KPT and Bryce and this and the other, it's cute, it's great, it's fun, but it really is just the, 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 the heat to the actual race. It's like my qualification to when Indianapolis goes, I've earned my right to have a car in the starting position. We hope that made you happy. And right now, I'm in Cupertino, just half an hour south of San Francisco. I feel like a traitor behind the walls, a PC person at Apple headquarters. The program is about to meet a man whose whiteboard says the best way to predict the future is to invent it. My title is Manager of Advanced Technology Evangelism. Is that your real title? That's my real title. Yeah. Right. And what that means, um, in the context of the Advanced Technology Group is that our organization is responsible for communicating that which will become the future. This is QuickTime VR. This is not video. This is still photography. As you can see, we're moving around. I can zoom in to an area on the screen. How many photographs do you make this? This particular one is 12 photographs. I can look up, look down, and we're inside the company store, we're looking around 360 degrees. But now, I can walk forward, step forward yet again, and move it again. Look to the left, look up, look down. For example, if I wanted to go over to the merchandise area, click over in this bottom area, we see there's a whole stack of mugs. Well, I can pick up one of these mugs, for example, and spin it around. See, it says Apple, look at it, oh, nothing in there. We're interested in building enabling foundations 
enabling tools that let the really creative people, not Apple, the really creative people, do the creative work. This will ship later this summer. It's called Quick Draw 3D. We have a bit of information that we can play around with actually in three dimensions, right in the clipboard. So what I can do is grab this dinosaur and drag him out and drop him into my workspace. And there he is. But now I need to add a little bit more information. So let's um, shade this interactively. He's faceted now. And let's do vertex shading, which smooths it out. But a white dinosaur and a gray background doesn't really help us much. So I can go back here and click on a texture like this. Drag the texture right out of the scrapbook mm -hmm. and instantly mm -hmm. texture map the geometry. So this is a drag and drop capability that no one else can do. All of which is being done with no special hardware. Mm. Just a plain Power Macintosh CPU. Previous to this type of functionality on this machine, you would need a Silicon Graphics, Engineering Graphics workstation to do this. An unbelievably important future for all of us lie in the activities and actions of intelligent agents. You go into a washroom today and you put your hands in front of the sink and the water turns on. You pull it away, the water shuts off. You put your hand there again, the water turns on. The sink knows when you're there, it knows when you're not there, and it does something based on that event. I can stand in front of the most high-performance computer Mac, uh, that Apple builds today, the Power Macintosh 8100 with a 110 megahertz 601 chip, and wave my hands all I want. That computer doesn't know I'm there, and chances are that that computer is slightly more powerful than that sink. Your viewers can read this text, mm -hmm. highlighted in yellow. Mm -hmm. Dr. Smith lives on Smith Drive. Mm -hmm. But what does a computer know from DR dot to DR dot? Mm -hmm. How can it possibly get that? Dr. Smith lives on Smith Drive. What if I threw another DR in there? Dr. Smith lives on Dr. Smith Drive. This is the type of intelligence that is required. If you're going to have her read electronic mail to you while you're driving in your car, you don't want her making mistakes. No, no, exactly. I don't believe that Macintosh technology will take over the world. I do not believe that that will happen. I do believe that an effective licensing program, which we've started, will allow our market share to grow a point at a time. And I believe that you'll see us approach 15, 20, maybe even 25 market points over the course of the coming years. Check out this one. I can sing this song all day, but Rank would pull my plug. I love EA. Me and my son love EA because they make the best games. From their sports sims through to their fantastic Desert Strike series. In this case, you have someone trapped in a POW camp. They're about to be uh, executed. They're signaling to you to come rescue them, to come get them. And if you don't get there, they're going to die. And you'll probably see their, you know, the scene where they're killed. And you're going to go, wow, I, I just lost that person. You know, and you'll feel bad about that. And you'll go back and start the mission over again. And this time, you'll feel compelled to rescue them before they're, they're taken. A, a new product called uh, Tough Man. And there's this uh, very American tournament where any man off the street who thinks he's tough enough can sign up and it's an open classification three rounds of uh, a boxing and they just strap on the gloves and go at it and it's become quite a cult uh, phenomenon the last four years have seen uh, very substantial growth in this business Every year, the increase is fantastic because we're at a selling rate worldwide of over 40 million PCs a year. And I expect that to continue. So it is a very healthy situation. Key to this growth is the pace of innovation. The Microsoft Home is a place where Microsoft can test and explore what consumer products really feel like in people's houses. It's a mirage. Uh, it's a corner of an office building, and it's made to look like the public areas of a middle-class house. Um, it doesn't have a bathroom and a bedroom. Well, here in the home, we see a couple different devices that have been incorporated. A little wall panel display, and you can pick the particular activity you're going to engage in and have all the lights uh, the way that you want them. Over at the TV set, you're no longer tied down to the particular schedule uh, where that, that show comes out on. So here we're showing the kind of control that an individual will have over this system of setting it up so they only have to pay attention 
uh, to what they're interested in. Next. The most interesting thing to see happening, even though we knew it intellectually, was that when you're sitting on a couch, 10 foot away from a screen, even though it's got a lot of computer processing power in it, it just feels very different. I'll be back with the whole sad story for you in just a few minutes, or click those buttons right now for my national forecast.